Hi there, my name is Father Tom Merck. I'm the Associate Pastor at St. Anne's in Chasso and St. Albert the Great in Houghton. And I just would like to share a brief reflection with the readings and the prayers from this upcoming Sunday. This Sunday, we're celebrating the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're getting closer and closer to Lent, which starts this upcoming Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. So in our readings today, first we hear from the book of Leviticus, the book of the law, where we hear about what happens when a person is thought to have leprosy and what what he has to do and how he's treated. So leprosy in this context could mean Hansen's disease, but it also could mean a variety of other contagious skin diseases that would include de deteriorating skin, oozing skin, other awful things happening to it with leaving leading to loss of fingers or toes or lit entire limbs and blindness. One of the scariest things about these diseases, especially in this time, was how contagious they were and how important it was to keep people in a way separated from the community. Now, this was something that unfortunately was very brutal in a way. It was really tough on the person. Not only did the person have this horrible disease, but now instead of being cared for, he or she was treated as an outcast. This shows how the law, it can just keep people safe in a way. It can't cure, it can't save. But we see how Jesus fulfills the law because he can cure and he can save. But now back to Leviticus. This person who gets leprosy, he has to cry out, unclean, unclean. He has to keep his garments rent and his head bare and muffle his beard. And he also, the worst part, so not only does he have to move around in this um, degrading way and change his appearance and show that he is unclean, he has to dwell away outside of the camp, most likely with other lepers. And this can lead to great bitterness in that small leper community that's always outside of camp. Hopefully people would be bringing them food or they'd have to be, have to find some way to get food themselves. They were also very susceptible to attack that if a group was going to attack the people, the lepers were usually the first to be attacked and they were the weakest and they couldn't be protected. Outs being outside of the camp also meant that they weren't allowed to worship, that they were cut off from the worship of the community. They weren't able to be part of the temple sacrifice or the sacrifice at the meeting tent in any way. So this cut them off from their friends, their family, but also in a way from their religious practice. In the gospel today, we hear that a leper approaches Jesus. A leper comes up and kneels before him and says, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus feels pity for him. He recognizes that this person has been through a lot, that this person is struggling, yet he still has faith in God. He still recognizes Jesus, not quite as God yet, but as a prophet, as someone sent from God, and hopefully eventually does, because of this miracle, recognize him as God. And Jesus is able to make this man clean. This man has great faith and recognizes that Jesus is important and comes before him with confidence, not demanding, not in arrogance, not saying he deserves something because society has been so mean to him, but in confidence and in love. And it's important to notice that he says, if you wish, you can make me clean. The clean has kind of a religious connotation, meaning that once someone is clean, they can enter into the temple worship again. They're part of the community, yes, but they can also be part of the worship of that community. So we see a religious context here. This man is a faithful Jew who wants to be part of the temple worship and knows to go to Jesus in order to bring him back to God. Jesus then makes this man clean and the man Jesus still tells him to follow the law, go to the priest, go and get the do the prescribed offering, get the certificate from the priest to show that he is clean. Jesus still has this man follow what is supposed to be done. And it's important to see and the ritual that has to be done um, for one when one is brought back into the community after being unclean is to sacrifice two turtle doves or to get two turtle doves. One is sacrificed and the blood of that one is put on the other and that one covered in the blood is set free. We see this in a way with Christ. When we look at the cross, it was his blood that covers our sins. His blood was the sacrifice. And because we've taken him on in a way through baptism, through our spiritual life, through prayer, and who we receive today in the Eucharist, his body and blood, 
we're able to stand free. We're able to be free from sin, to fly away from sin and fly to heaven and to be with our Lord in heaven for all eternity. Something also that I think is important to note is this man, he went and he went to publicize the whole matter. He told everybody about it, even though Jesus told him not to. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. Jesus has taken this leper's place. The leper has been welcomed back into the community. And Jesus is now the one who was ostracized in a way. Jesus is now the one who can't enter because of his fame, because he's known to be this holy man. He's the one who's alone on the outside now. Just as he was alone on the cross, just as he went to the cross himself, where we belong up there for the punishment for our sins. Jesus took that punishment upon himself so that we can enter into heaven with him for all eternity. So, in the, this gospel, well, looking at the second readings, we hear brothers from Paul to the Corinthians, Do whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to Jews or Greeks or to the church of God. This shows that everything that we're called to do, we're called to do for the Lord. We're called to offer up everything for him, all of our interactions. The gospel today calls us to reach out to those who are ostracized in some way. Yes, in a way, leprosy has been wiped out from the modern world, especially in the first world. But there are still so many other spiritual leprosies in the world. People who are alone, mental illness, people who are ostracized for whatever reason people we disagree with politically, people we disagree with on whatever other issue. But we're still called to be with them. We're still called to recognize that the Lord went to the ostracized. And Paul calls us to do whatever we do for the glory of God, giving offense to no one, whether Jew or Greek or to the church of God. Now, this doesn't mean we back down when we evangelize, but we're called to go to the ostracized, go to those we disagree with, Go to those we may think not think have a share in eternal life. Jesus went out to the lepers. Jesus went out to the ostracized. We're called to do that too. Maybe we just start by praying for them. And then when the opportunity comes, we're able to take it. But first off, we need to be praying. We need to recognize that the Lord has done so much for us. And because of that, we want to do that for others. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for all of your prayers and support. Please continue to keep me and Father Ben and our whole community and both of our communities in your prayers. And please know of our prayers for you as well.